Guys, welcome to the I Love Seville show. It's great to be with you on a Monday. Thank you kindly for joining us. My name is Jerry Miller. I hope you had a fabulous weekend. So super excited for this program. The galas are on set from the Ishan Gala Foundation. Fabulous people. We're going to spotlight their journey. We're going to highlight a nonprofit that is making a positive impact in this community, whether it's their event at um, the ACAC Water Park off of Four Seasons, whether it's their carnival on the downtown mall by Jack Browns. They're doing some fabulous, fabulous things to drive awareness and to fight pediatric cancer. So we're gonna showcase their journey here in a matter of moments. We encourage you to share and like the Facebook streams and the channels that you're watching the show upon, just like Ashley Cherix just did. Um, Kimmy Crosscamp, we're gonna to get to you in a matter of moments. Um, just join us, let's have a good time. Roger, I'm gonna relay your message to everybody here as well. A lot of people watching right now. Judah Wickhauer, you're checking the stream on the back end and give us a thumbs up. Harris Tolber is our director. Why don't we thank Harris first, a couple of the sponsors, please. Um, I would love to give some attention to some props to Interstate Pest and Service Companies. We are their proud advertising agency of record. And this business started, the first generation of the business started in 1969 with Mr. Wells. And Mr. Wells had a dream to build a business. Um, he had himself, sweat equity, a dream in his personal truck. He would go to his first client, service them successfully, and then find the closest payphone in 1969 and say, may I go to your home now? Today, Interstate Pest and Service Company has almost 100 employees. It's a family generation, four generation strong business, and a commonwealth-wide footprint. And we are so grateful to be working with this company. We are so grateful to be working with Dr. Scott Wagner of Scott Wagner Chiropractic and Sports Medicine as well. Whether it's physical therapy, chiropractic care, or sports medicine, Dr. Wagner has your back. In fact, that tagline, who's got your back, manifestation right here in this office with VMV Brands. Thank you both to Dr. Wagner and Interstate for being a part of this program and for being on our roster of clients. Harris Tolber, we cannot do this show without you. You will undoubtedly be missed next week. I mean that sincerely. Um, I would like to go to the studio cam, please, sir. And let's welcome um, Sajel and Mayak to the program. Thank you kindly for joining us. Absolutely. Um, you guys are amazing. I can see it by how many people are watching right now. Um, you just are sincere and authentic and hardworking and committed to making the community better and, and, and increasing and improving the footprint that you live upon in our community and leaving it a better place than when you first arrived. Before we get to the foundation, let's talk about uh, yourself as people. Sure. Um, and Sajel, we will start with you. Okay. Who is Sajel Gala? <laughs> <laughs> Sajel Gala. I am a mom of two, um, Archer and Eli. Ishan was my firstborn. Uh, both my boys are fully spirited, full-on boys, love life. Um, my husband and I, we both are entrepreneurs, uh, and we love being full-time parents as well. We enjoy that time with our family. Um, we, I, I love painting. I love writing poems. I love uh, meeting people in the community. This is my favorite thing to do. Uh, and uh, just living life and serving people. I think that's something that uh, motivates mm -hmm. both of us is to serve people. Same question Absolutely. for you. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I grew up in Charlottesville, been here since I was three. My mom practiced medicine here, and my dad worked as an engineer. And so, I, you know, for me, I um, you know, became an entrepreneur at a young age. I was 18 years old when I entered the realm of entrepreneurship and, and really mentoring. And so for me, my passion uh, from a work perspective has always been uh, mentorship and coaching and, and guiding people in the right direction. Uh, and of course, you know, we have two boys. Archer just started motocross, and uh, that's been interesting. <laughs> He's eight years old, and my four-year-old's riding a two-wheeler now. So but my interests, I used to be a skateboarder. Uh, so while they're cruising around on their bikes in, in the neighborhood, I am cruising around on my electric skateboard in the neighborhood. So. I will give you some props, Mac. You are undoubtedly one of the most fit people I know. <laughs> um, I have taken uh, many a class at ACAC where I'm struggling to survive, and then I will look at the instructor at ACAC, and they'll turn to you and say, you know what, why don't you teach the class? <laughs> <laughs> and goodness. you teach it better than the instructor. Not that I'm marginalizing any of them, sure. but fitness is a, a, a very important aspect of your life. Absolutely. Yes. I mean, of course, having having children in my, I'm 44 years old, and I always say I go in the class acting like I'm 22, and I come out reminded I'm 44, um, but I want to stay fit for the kids and our family, and you know, fitness has just been a part of our lifestyle and, and our journey. Give it a like and a share on any of the streams that you're watching. We have a number of comments coming in. I'm going to get to all these comments. St. Joel, one of the things I love about your family is you guys, even your boys, love human connection. Yes. Amen. You love interacting with people. You guys are constantly like 
positive and high energy and just like I am drawn to your energy. I'm a huge Thank energy you. person mm -hmm. and I feel it. It's tangible. Talk to us about human connection as it pertains to you. Well, for me, I think um, if you win the hearts of people, that's where you make the best investment is in people. I think everything else emanates from who you are as a person within yourself. And I think everybody out there has something to give, something to offer, something that I can take away from. So I'm not looking at people in terms of what they're wearing, but what is inside of them. And everybody can teach you something. And if you have a, this spirit of humility and a spirit of wanting to connect with people and what they have mm. got that is good that you can take away from and what you can add to them in terms of adding value to their life then that's a winning combination and I think that kind of connection really uh, does a lot of good for people um, for my family personally I know but also my friends my community and really can bring about impact in a positive way uh, on a daily basis. So for me, yeah. that that is a big thing. Uh, the, the personal touch with people is big. Yeah. Same question for you. Yeah, you know, for me, I just realized, uh, I, I learned from a young age, there's a lot of things you can invest in, you know, but the greatest investment is in other people. Yeah. Outside of yourself, I think the greatest investment is in other people. And so for us, it, our life is we wake up in the morning, we know what we're thankful for. And then secondly is who can we add value to? Um, and that's how we try to live every single day of our life, and, and that is to continue to add value to people, recognize their strengths, yeah. um, and remind them of what they're capable of. And so I think, for me, that's where our connections is. It's just being genuine, being real. We are who we are, and uh, you know, we don't pretend to be somebody else. This is true. I love it. I love it. We talk about um, the origin or the birth story a lot on this show, and you've mm -hmm. touched on this already, Mayak. You've yeah. talked about, did you say born and raised? Well, I was raised three. here. I was actually born in India. Okay. believe it or not and then we I was uh, raised here my parents came to New Jersey first okay. then to Virginia and settled here and so since three years old 1980 I've been in Charlottesville so talk to us about Charlottesville's uh growth, evolution, the yeah. changes. I mean, you've wow. seen it firsthand. Oh, yeah. 39 years yeah. in Charlottesville. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I remember yeah. when 29 was a one lane road and the mall, I think uh, the Fashion Square Mall was just built at the time. And at that time, the downtown area was actually, you know, kind of dilapidated a little bit. And uh, man, hindsight's perfect. Don't you wish you could have bought everything down here back in the 80s? <laughs> um, but it's cool to watch this community grow, uh, become what it is today. Uh, Sajal and I feel, you know, why have we chosen to stay here? It's just been a great place to raise our kids. Uh, we love our community. Uh, this is home for us. Roger Voynze, Jerry, so glad you discovered Mayak and Sajil. You know how to find the best people. Hello, Mayak. You need to keep practicing my last name, though. He's talking to me, <laughs> Voynze. I'm sorry, Roger. Kimmy is giving you some props. Hello to my most fantastic and wonderful neighbors. I love you guys. Um, Ashley is sharing the feed. Dave Warwick, Chris Jensen, Richard Allen Fox, people. Mark Wagman. Thank you kindly for joining us on the show. Um, you're going to have to help me with this name right here. Puneet Patia. Nice. Um, she is what she is yeah, watching. She see, says, Puneet. I absolutely love you. Oh, Sajal. that's amazing. Great, um, great person. How about the love story? How sure. you guys met? <laughs> oh, my goodness. I mean, this guy's a charming guy. You're yeah. a beautiful yes. lady here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, tell us about the love story. Here. Well, my story is always she fell in love, and that's how it all started. Okay. Right? Yes. So that's that's my story. Okay? <laughs> I, don't you, I, right I don't think you I don't think you need her story. Just stick with that one right now. Uh, we met at a pretty young age. You know, yeah. I was, uh, uh, you know, pursuing my enterprise from a young age and she was a college student in Detroit, mm -hmm. Michigan, wow. and basically I was up in Michigan working with some people. Uh, I met her. Um, it's funny, the guy I was with uh, said, hey, what if you end up marrying that girl? And I was like, there's no way. Oh, yeah. um, and I don't even know why I said that. And then a year later, I saw her at a business conference mm -hmm. and uh, basically knew that she was meant to be my wife, like literally just yeah. from that moment. And I told her a week later on the phone, so he, no he no filter. Yeah. Just hey, a week after after I, just at the it, second it, at the business conference. Yes, I just wow. say, I just want you to know. Were, we're you like this is aggressive? Yeah. Well, it was <laughs> it was so interesting. We were very young. Yeah. Um, How old is young? Uh, I mean, I was twenty two. I was twenty one. Yeah, twenty one. Twenty one. Twenty three. Yeah. And uh, the first time I'd seen you, I was nineteen. You were twenty two. Yeah. And or twenty one actually. And uh, after the business conference, he just got on the phone and talked to me for a couple minutes and I said well you know we're we're in a business opportunity we're building the business I just really don't want to have this burden on my heart to date a guy it may or may not work out I was in Michigan he was in Virginia and he right out came and said 
well, I'm calling you and talking to you because I have a lot of interest in you, but really I would like to get married to you, and that's how he proposed. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> <laughs> he knew what yep. he wanted. Yep. And I said, That's awesome. Yeah, yeah he just, just knew. This man has always forever known what he wants. He knows it immediately Love and he that, goes man. after it. That's a that's a yep. strength. <laughs> it's a strength. Yeah. It is. Yep. So I've never I've never doubted that and it's yep. something that we've had in our life. We know if we want to make a, a difference in something, we want to yep. do something. It's immediate, and we go after it. And he went after me like that. So yep. that was very. What was your reaction? I was like, "Oh, that changes everything." <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, "Is that a yes?" <laughs> was that a yes? The answer. Well, I came. Was from that an, like a pump the brakes? Yes, I was like, "Wait a minute." Okay. Um, but I come from an Indian family. Okay. I'm an immigrant. I have it. It's the story of a perfect immigrant story. Came to America at 15 okay. with my parents and um, went to med school, just started, mm -hmm. just started all of the stuff that every immigrant in this nation has to do from scratch. Okay. And uh, the cultural notions of being married and having an arranged marriage was kind of tough for me. And uh, so my family said, I said, I have to ask my parents because you do have to ask your parents culturally. And I did, and they said yes, and so that began our journey. Well, even if they would have said uh, no, I would have figured it out. So. Yes, you would have. <laughs> no, you yes, would've. you would have. <laughs> How yes. were you received by your parents? <laughs> oh, that's an interesting him. story. I itself. would love to hear that okay. story. So I go up to visit her. Okay. I, I remember like it was yesterday. I think it was yeah. Thanksgiving weekend. From Virginia to from Detroit. Virginia mm -hmm. to Detroit. Okay. So I'm thinking I'm just going to meet her mom and dad. And then it ends up being an interrogation. Okay, a full out. You it seriously? Was, it I was met like, like my forty big fat people. Greek wedding. Yep, it yeah. was exactly. If you watch the big fat I Greek wedding movie, movie uh, you, th th that's it. Yes. Okay, my big fat Indian wedding. That's basically yes. what it ended up becoming. So, uh, but, but you, yes. you like you shine uh, in those situations. You shine in front of people. You shine when your back against is against the wall. When yeah. pressure is tough. I mean, you probably were like, all right, let's bring it, let's go. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I, I always, you know, I've always been the guy that somebody. He's not criticizing you. You're not doing anything great with your life. So, right. Um, right. So yeah, I'm not that they were criticizing me, but you know, obviously they had their was, guard up. They had their guard up. Well, Absolutely. they had a language barrier too. My okay. family yeah, spoke mostly um, uh, Gujarati or Hindi, which is the national language of India. Okay. And his he never he doesn't speak any of it. So they would they would ask questions in Hindi, and he would be like. You know, he wouldn't say anything. He'd just shake the head, the Indian head shake. Yeah, it's called the Indian head <laughs> shake. Indian that's head. how you win. That's Can you how show you... me the Indian head shake? <laughs> it's side to side. Okay. It's like yes. this. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> but you know what's amazing is that if real connections don't need words. They oh, need spirit. That. And yep. you have to really understand that when you are talking about language of hearts, yep. you rarely need words. You need your spirit talking to another person. And as a matter of fact, sometimes you can look into people's eyes and you can find a connection. You can see, you can shake somebody's hand and you can find a connection. Absolutely. And this is something that we both intrinsically believe in. Yep. And I think my parents really connected to who he was as a person. And your mom loved me by the end of the Yes, weekend. she did. She absolutely loved him. <laughs> you charmed her? I yes, charmed her. Yeah, he did. I did. He it's won their to... hearts. And, and here we are. We and just celebrated 20 years. That's yes. amazing. You guys are so freaking young. <laughs> Thanks. I Thank mean, how you. often do you well, hear she that? Well, was, she was 11 when I married her. So. <laughs> Dude, I swear to God, I would think you were like 30 years old. I, thank you. I appreciate it. You hear it. that all the time, don't you? Yeah, I, I hear them. I look younger than I probably yeah. am, for sure. Yes. So. so what happens after you go to Detroit and you meet the extended family? What's How's the flow? Well, literally out? six months later, we were engaged. A year later, we were married. That's yeah. awesome. And I mean, then started our life together. You, you know. moved then to Charlottesville? Mm -hmm. I did. Okay. Yeah. And yep. was that... What was that like? So two big so moves for was, you, right? Yes. So move from India to America. I came to Detroit first, Metro Detroit area. Um, did my schooling there, got accepted to med school, met this guy, married him, didn't go to med school, and started, um, came down to Charlottesville yep. and started our business together. Yep. Um, and that's, that's, that was a big move. My family was kind of... Uh, a little no bit. med school? How was no. that? Yeah. Well, I think we both distinctively also knew that we had this dream and this goal that we wanted to chase. Okay. And I think when you clearly know what you want, um, yeah. you know, everything gets on back burner because you have a vision and a focus. Yeah. And that drove us. And Absolutely. I knew that both of us together wanted to build something. Uh, just the yep. way we founded our this foundation, uh -huh. and we want to take it somewhere together. Yep. Uh, we both knew it, so it was yep. not hard because I knew what I wanted in life. Okay. 
talk yeah. to us. Yeah, I mean, our desire was to, you know, not just create income, but create a lifestyle. And yes. I kind of talked to her about that. And, you know, we had, I think it was easy to make those type of decisions yeah. early in our life because we also had great mentorship and guidance yeah. um, from people that had what we wanted in life. Yeah. Um, I think that makes making the right decisions even easier when you're able to get the right perspectives yeah. uh, from people you trust, love, admire, and they reflect the type of life that you want to have down the road. So, and Chrissy Rodriguez, such a power couple in the studio today. Thank Jeff you. Wisdom, Chrissy. who I think is watching in Dallas, oh my. says, uh, hi there, Mayak. I love seeing you. I can't wait to see you all in September. Uh, awesome. Marcus Anthony Fennel Bibbs, love oh this my. story. Love this couple. True leaders. Dakota Shearer, can't wait to learn how to do the business better from you guys. Give wow. it a like and a share. If you want to relay any questions, comments, perspective, put it in the chat box, and I will pass it along. So talk to us about um, husband and wife yep. yeah. starting a business. My sure. wife works in this business. Sure. It's no easy task. <laughs> no. Okay. I often say that it's like, and our business was 11 years old, celebrated its 11 year anniversary in May. My wife yep. has been working in the business for, say, you know, a few years. Yeah. Okay. okay. And when, when we're here, you know, there's a clear call the shots. Yeah. Absolutely. I have a hard time when I get home turning off that mindset. Yeah. Absolutely. And then walking in, and then it's like, all right, yep. it's a partnership. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Give me advice, please, because I am struggling <laughs> oh, with gosh. this right now. Oh. She's watching right now, probably doing payables and receivables oh by goodness. saying, Jerry, I'm learning. Please. Got it. Got it. Well, by no means are we uh, perfect by any stretch. No. And I think for us, um, it was one, understanding roles okay. and um, mostly understanding kind of how to compartmentalize those roles. You know, yeah. it's like we know how to operate in our business environment together. We've never been in competition yeah. with each other. Um, sometimes she does a better job than I do. Sometimes I do a better job than her, but either way, we just have learned to fill the gaps. Yeah. Um, so we try to figure out, you know, how to live our life where we can compartmentalize those times. You know, we're being husband and wife. We don't allow the business to so kind of bleed into that. Yeah. I can turn it off. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. probably been one of my greatest strengths is to switch gears. Yeah. yeah. You know, if I have stuff I need to do with the foundation, I can switch gears, do that. If I'm playing with the kids, that's my focus. If I'm hanging with her, we're going out to dinner together. Um, um, that's my focus. Yeah. So I, th I feel like an important uh, thing that I've learned over the years is just how to compartmentalize and, you know, live in the moments. Like we're always trying to live in that next moment and uh, we miss out on the current moment that we're in right now. Well said. Sajel, yeah. what are you thinking? Well, I mean, th it's the truth what he said. And, you know, we both realize that each of us have a strength. Both of us have our strengths. And to perform mm -hmm. in our strength zones, um, yep. and it best complements each other. Yep. And I think the, the unity in vision, where we're trying to go as a family, yep. uh, I think matters a lot. Everything emanates for us from our family, who we are as a couple, who we are as a, with our children. Yep. Um, and so the direction that we're trying to go to, yep. uh, we are both very clear about it so there's yep. no competition in in wondering like you know who's got more time not time recognition ego yep. because it's both of us moving forward together yep. um, so that has helped a lot that basic foundation Absolutely. but just living in the moment like he said being thankful for where we are because there's times that you are in the fight and you have to run hard and you don't have much time, family time. Yep. And then there's times that you have family time. Yep. But if you understand where you are and you appreciate it for little things, yep. I think it goes long ways. Yep. Great really. answers right there. Yeah. How about Spotlight the Business? Sage will throw it to you. Talk to us about the business in totality. In general, I, I mean, I, I don't know what else to say other than the fact that this is our work is our life. Our life is our work. Okay. Like it's not two different things. I think when you find an area of passion um, that helps, both of us had a serving heart. We wanted to make an impact in mm -hmm. our community. We both knew that when we succeeded with doing what we're doing in our enterprise, that we wanted to help other people accomplish the same goals and dreams. And uh, we both were aware of that from a very young age. Yeah. So I think that we integrate both together. Yeah. Um, there's never a time that we're, we're either just building the business or just have a separate uh, th uh, time as a family. But I think that's just that passion in workplace or in what mm -hmm. you're doing in life when yep. you find that it's no longer a chore yep. um and it becomes your daily living so well, i'm excited it's kind of like kind of like you jerry yeah. obviously this isn't just a business it's a purpose that's it's right. a passion, exactly right yeah. and exactly. i've always passion believed my profession never work a day in your life amen, amen. yeah and, and for me i've always told people if you follow your purpose then your dreams will follow that yes. you know we we've been blessed you know financially we've we've i haven't worked 
you know, for, for someone else for 20, 22 years now. Yeah. And a lot of that's just because we chased our purpose. Yeah. Um, and I think for us, you know, our business, you know, as far as what we do in the revenue sharing industry, it was very non-traditional. What we've done is yeah. probably misunderstood by most people. Uh-huh. Um, but uh, one of the things uh, that we do is we mentor people. That's our number one business really is guiding and coaching other people. Um, you know, in this kind of volatile economy and what people are trying to accomplish yeah. with their lives, we want to be able to give them direction. And I would say that's more our business today than particularly a product or a, a business, if that makes sense. Kelly so. Mason says, I love this couple. I'm proud to be in partnership with them. Um, you got a lot of people uh, watching like Coda Willie, Crystal, LaDawn Valentine. Okay. I'm going to get to you guys here in a <laughs> nice. few moments. Um, leave comments and I will relay them to them. Welcome to the program. Zach Zimmerman, Laura Fonner, yeah. Teresa Davis, Carol Schwab Barnett. A lot of people watching right now. Oh my right goodness, now. wow. Um, let me throw this to you here. As sure. far as... Um, you have built, you know, what you just said, I've never worked for somebody else for 20 plus years. Yes. Um, you are building something like in a positive way that's giving back. I mean, in a lot yeah. of ways that is like, you know, the quintessential and it's almost cliche now, but the quintessential American dream. Yeah. How does Amen. that dream, is that dream, and educate me, because I really don't know, I'm not sure. that well-traveled, I'm not that cosmopolitan, is that dream synonymous with like the Indian dream or how are they different, how are they similar? No, I think for me, it was it was being around people from a very young age okay. that showed me that type of vision. OK, yes. um, because to be honest with you, growing up, you know, I grew up with two parents working professional jobs, uh-huh. um, although my parents in their 40s actually left their jobs, became entrepreneurs themselves. Really? What do they do? Yeah. yeah s- same thing. Really? You know, I awesome. kind of learned some things from them early on. Okay. I, I got access to the same mentorship that they had access to. Okay. And so for me, I, I watched them transition their lives from busy professionals to entrepreneurs and I just saw them happier you know so this is at the age of 12 so obviously by the time I turned 18 it was my, my mindset has been molded a little mm-hmm. bit differently um, it's like because how mine I, was yeah I mean so for us we've just been around people with tremendous vision um, and I feel like uh, visions are contagious you know who you associate with you end up becoming just like uh, so from a young age I kind of molded myself to seeing a different pattern yeah. um, and that's what we pursued you know, um, and it's not that we, you know, just because I tell people we don't work a job, I still invest time, obviously, sure. yeah. in my enterprise. Not like we're sitting retired watching the grass grow. You sure. know, we, yeah. we spend our energy and our time guiding and coaching other people, and that's been where we choose to put our value. I love it. So. I love it. Um, Coda Willie, if you could go back starting the young, starting again as a young man, what would you change? I'm 20 years old looking to go to 7,500 points in the next 12 months. Let me take this to a different spot here and say, and if you could go back. Yep. 20 years. Yep. What would you do differently? Obviously, you did uh, something really well right here. Yeah. (laughs) No question. No question. Yeah. You know, what would I do differently? Um, I think that one of the things I I feel people do is waste their youth. Okay. Um, You know, not that I necessarily wasted my youth. I really built uh, what I could in my youth. But I feel like if I could go back and do it over again, I would have developed a stronger sense of urgency Mm -hmm. in my younger years. Um, You know, one of the things, Jerry, I believe is that life only gets more complicated as we get older. It doesn't get simpler. You know, parents get older, you have children. I mean, when it was just me by myself building my enterprise, it was a lot simpler back then. You know, now I have a wife, I have kids, I have parents that are getting older. We have a foundation. So there's a lot of moving parts in our life. So when you're young, you know, I think one of the greatest decisions is, um, is build now and play later. Uh, whereas most people want to play now and build later. And I see a lot of my old friends they kind of chose to just party it up in their 20s and, and nothing against having a great time. We had a great time in our 20s, yeah. um, but we also understood the sense of urgency. Um, and if I could go back, I would have made that sense of urgency even stronger mm-hmm. um, because I feel like the fruits of what we've been able to, to how we live our life today is a representation of really what we did in our 20s and 30s. I love that answer. Say, uh, Anita Collier, Shiflet Smith, Sagel, amazing couple. You guys help so many Thank people you. in business and in the cancer community. Um, how about the Ishan Gala Foundation? And sure. um, I was um, you know, uncertain of how, as an interviewer, I was going to ask this question. Sure. Okay, so I'm going to just, you know, start open-ended. The Ishan Gala Foundation um, started um, because of a very tough time in your life. Yeah, mm-hmm. so... Um, to you. Absolutely. I'll start just yeah. because I, you know, obviously the Ishan Gala Foundation is named after our first child who we lost uh, when he was two years old and nine days uh, to a rare form of cancer called neuroblastoma. And 
So really the foundation was my baby in the beginning, um, mainly because I think people grieve differently. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, uh, grieving came in the form of action. Um, you know, I didn't know what else to do. Our dreams were shattered. You know, we, it was a very dark, dark time in our life. I, I can remember the day we lost him and I remember the experiences of that day. And immediately, um, as soon as he, you know, passed on, I made a decision that we need to do something. Right. And, you know, initially, uh, we started the Eastern Gala Foundation. It's hard to believe now. This is 2009. 11 years. Um, so we've been around for 11 years. And so it was just started out of, out of me grieving and saying, I got to do something. Um, and initially, uh, we focused a little bit on research. Uh, and, you know, being able to support hospitals. We've done grants and different things like that. And then really over a couple of years, um, my passion really became more the families. Um, and so the inception of the foundation was really born out of grieving, to be honest with you, and really trying to figure the pieces out. You know, I mean, uh, for us with faith, I was like, hey, God, what do you what do you want? How, what am I supposed to do now? You know, I don't I don't feel I feel broken I, I don't know what to do with my life, and uh, I feel like this foundation honestly became a, a light to me, an opportunity to say, okay, my son's no longer fighting for his life, um, but there are kids out there who are, and that's yeah. what we've been called to do now. So, What do you think, Sajel? Well, and I, I can really take no credit for the starting of the foundation because I was in a super grief mode. I I'm so thankful to God that he stood in the time when he was very, very weak, but he still chose to stand, and it's uh, so admirable. Um, not just because he's my husband, but I think that any individual that is going through that time in their life, which I don't wish upon anybody, mm -hmm. uh, decides to take a stand and do something more, um, focuses their eyes on serving another, uh, is, is commendable and it, the foundation is today because he stood and then we all stood with him to support that and for me I just came on board fully just two years ago um, as a family like when I was in that hospital with my son and my husband I saw what cancer does and this is my personal belief that you know that a patient our little heroes they fight they fight so bravely in that hospital room and I saw my son being that little hero in my eyes. Uh, he was a champion. He had a brave heart and every single day he fought to, to survive one, one more day, mm -hmm. right? And there's so many children like that, but there's also the extended part that cancer takes. It takes more than just the child. It takes everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and I remember writing in my journal at one time saying, this hit the topography of my life and it is changed, and I don't know now how to work with this new topography. I don't know how to maneuver this new uh, place in my life because it took a lot from us. It took our relationship as we knew it. Mm -hmm. it, it made, a, 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 it, the abnormal was normal anymore because as a parent, you don't think, Jerry, that your child will pass away before you. No, that's not a natural state of being. Mm -hmm. And I saw it took marriages, it took sibling relationships. There was a lot of grief involved in the loss of the child, but there was a lot of financial difficulties. Um, there was a lot of this looming tension of what if my child dies? And then on top of it, all the financial stuff that happens. If we, uh, we didn't have any other children, that, but, but we saw families that had other children who they couldn't, the mom and dad couldn't give the ample time to these other siblings because yep. they had to dedicate that time to the child in the hospital. And so there were grandparents and uncles and aunts that had to take care of the mm -hmm. children. And the, the emotional, psychological needs of the other siblings were probably not met as well as they could have been because there was just no time for, for mm. them. And the parents want to do the best. And so much of the dignity of the parents is lost because you really can't fight this thing on your own, on your own might. Yeah. You need the support of your family. You need the support of the entire community. And you don't want to get it. For Mike and I, we were blessed that we had created a business that could financially support us. Yeah. But we, we saw that other families couldn't do it. There were yeah. so 
so many families that left their jobs, their homes, worked their homes, um, sold their homes to come to New York City where we had our son at Sloan Kettering and they were literally making it happen day to day. Right. There were financial arguments, there were grief-filled arguments, there was fear-based arguments that were happening in those hospital rooms. Right. And um, I came back saying, we can't just write a check and think that this is gonna be done. We can't just write, drop off a gift and think that this is done. We need to give a family fully rounded support. So our foundation is all about families. Yeah. We give support to the patient. We give support financially to the families. We include siblings in everything that we do. We have care packages that are customized. We're not gonna drop off a generic gift. We take interest in who you are as a person, who your children are, what are their interests, so they can feel like they are shown love. They are taken care of as best as they can in this time yep. and it's not just another toy that they may or may not use I'm not saying that it's some it's not a judgment or anything else it's just something that I visibly saw and it hurt my heart that there was so much that a cancer that cancer takes yep. from you and the aftermath of it lasts for so long. So we stay with our families for up to three years post-treatment because there's a lot of work to be done still afterwards. Yeah. There's still financial commitments that the family has to fight through, yeah. and we provide support in those areas. And yeah. for our Christmas, for example, our Christmas program includes the child fighting cancer and all of their uh, siblings because Christmas should be special for everybody. And uh, we buy gifts for every single person uh, in the family. We don't give the gifts to the child itself. We don't want to steal that from their parents. Mm -hmm. uh, so we hide it and we give the gifts to the parents as our Christmas party takes place, um, which is really wonderful. And the parents put it under the tree and the children get up and see uh, the 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 gifts there, they don't come from the Ishan Gala Foundation. The children don't know this. Why? Because so many times the parents have to ask for help. This one time at Christmas, we want the family to still have that family spirit. And we give them grocery cards so they can have great dinners. That one day, they can have great dinners and have a family time together. Because if we can keep the unit intact, maybe with each other's support and love, they can, um, they can come through with it. Mm -hmm. Mike and I, um, it took some real effort to make it as a couple, some real courage to dream of having more children um, and, and some guts, literally inspiration from God, I believe for him and from us, really it didn't happen on our might to be able to give back to the community. Yeah. So anything that we can do, um, to keep that family unit intact and support the family as a whole is our mission. Amazing answer. Yes. Yep. Amazing yeah. answer. A lot of comments on the feed. I'm going to welcome uh, these comments here shortly. Um, welcome the newly crowned delegate, Sally Hudson. Thank you for watching the program. Charles Ix, Miriam Thank Hernandez you. from Al Carbone is watching. Ray Cadell is watching. Wow. Sonia Marsha Dean's watching. Um, let me throw this to you, um, Sejal. How has the foundation helped you with? processing grief moving forward because i've yes. i've seen splash for a cure yeah okay i saw your carnival twice yeah once in the dunk tank and i'm seeing um folks from your foundation from a first-hand perspective seeing like the the like the value and the benefit and the positivity that they're gaining from like working alongside yes. the Ishan Gallon Foundation. I mean there was one guy that was firing fastballs when I was in the dunk tank. <laughs> yes. like, I was, this dude who was it Parker? Uh, yeah. It was Parker. Yes. This guy was like eight for ten. I know. I'm like, yes, he was. You're amazing <laughs> yeah. dude. Okay. Yeah. okay. And he was like in the dunk yeah, tank absolutely. hall of fame. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And, okay. he, and he took a break while I was in the dunk tank, right, which I was right. very thankful right. for. He didn't take a break when <laughs> no, I was in the dunk tank. Did. Okay. And I just I loved I just I just like it was just amazing and it's not just the kids and it's not just the parents it's like the extended family it's like yes. the friends of the parents yes being Absolutely. there how has the foundation helped you with processing grief 
I'll tell you this, the first few years was really, really hard for me. I was, um, Mike was working on the front end of the foundation. Mm -hmm. I was on the back end being more of a support to the moms, you know, and encouraging them through this um, role. But every time uh, a child that was with us through, the, through our foundation um, passed away, I felt that grief all over again, um, the loss all over again. And it took me a little while as a mom to overcome that. But I remember distinctively at one point, and I don't think it could have happened without the support of the community and the people that kept the work at the foundation alive for mm -hmm. us, our incredible board um, that has relentlessly worked, um, people yeah. in the community, ACAC, um, for constantly hosting the Splash for a Cure, uh, LTD, who is one of our you know, sponsors, um, presenting sponsors, and a lot of our business community yeah. and volunteers that you know, stepped in and helped um, keep it, keeping it going. And it gave me time to do some work, but also recover um, as a mom uh, of a child fighting cancer. And two years ago, when I just said, all right, plunge in Sage Gala. Yeah. I cannot be on the end of fear. I have got yeah. to be on the end of faith. There is a lot more Love work that. to do. Yeah. And when I decided to plunge in, getting out there and meeting people in the community, Jerry, I have to say, people like you, um, people like um, just, just everybody, uh, people that have sponsored our events, um, and meeting and talking about the cause talking about what happens to a family yeah. when they go through cancer. It took the eyes away from me and it put it on other people and gave me a voice to talk about their stories. Yeah. And I think in that process, I started to heal on the inside. And today I can speak about this without crying deliriously, you know, um, without with really keeping my wits about me. And that courage has come because I've been able to voice the story of children fighting cancer. My son is gone, he's gone for 11 years now. Um, his name is on the foundation, we honor him, but we fight for the children in the fight right now and the families mm -hmm. that are working with them. And being able to have the opportunity to share it with you guys has made the biggest difference in my life. Uh, Nua, Brianna, Light, Amen. You guys are rock stars. Ishan Gala is a huge uh, part of who they are. Outside of that, they've touched many others outside of the foundation, helping set parents free financially and coming home to their families thank so you. they can focus on what matters the most. This is just thank the beginning you. for them. Where did you find the strength? Did you feel like, I mean, I have well, to do this? I did. For me, um, you know, Jerry, is really faith. You know, yeah. um, I, I really believe that God was using this for me as to, to learn how to be a light in this world. And we don't want any credit for what we're doing. You know, we're not on the show today for credit. Um, but for me, I really believe it was knowing what rock to lean on. Yeah. And, you know, people were there for us, no question. Um, but for me, I had to stand strong on my faith yeah. um, and my belief that, um, you know, he wasn't done with me. I was broken, but not done. Um, and I think that um, a lot of people, you know, look for different places to get, you know, support. And, of course, our community, my, my business circles, my mentors all came in and supported me. But ultimately, I had to wake up. And I always tell people, you're going to be with yourself 24 hours a day. Um, no one's going to be with you 24 hours a day other than yourself. And so for me, honestly, it was faith. It was digging deeper into my calling, my purpose, even though... You know, we had dreams of what this boy would be like when he grew up. And, you know, we had just built a home at that point um, while she was pregnant with Ishan. And, you know, all of a sudden, two years in, we're, we're in this big house by ourselves. No sounds, no noises, you know, no child playing, no child waking us up in the morning. And, you know, I just had to dig deep in my faith. Um, and, and, you know, for me, it's not about, you know, a lot of, and, and I know there's a lot of charities out there and they all do great work. Our role, we're a small grassroots charity, you know, we, uh, a foundation, you know, we, we need as much support from the community as we can yeah. get. And, and I will say that for us, it's not just about the big things we do, but it's, it's being there at a birthday. I, I, I remember yeah. going in the hospital to celebrate a birthday party and bringing a cake. I remember showing up at someone's home with Christmas presents. You know, uh, I know our director has gotten a phone call from a mother saying, I can't leave my child in the hospital, but I'm hungry. Um, would you, could you go get me something to eat? Um, and it's see, and I remember when we were dealing with this and living in New York and just, uh, you know, just those little 
things that people did for us yeah. were huge. They were huge. And that's one of the things we try to be is not just, hey, let's just pay your mortgage, Let me, which we've done. Let us buy you a car, which we've done. But be there side by side, uh, being with them through their challenge and truly saying, hey, we know what you're going through. It's one thing to say that. And it's another that we've actually been through and lived that story with yeah. people. When, so. I, when I saw you at Splash for a Cure, Sage will cross the finish line yeah. last year. Like, it was, you know, like, I mean almost like a revelation. It was like you, you had this like almost weight lifted off of you. Like you mm -hmm. had this like ear to ear smile. You were like beaming. Yeah. And I believe your son Archer, um, who's competitive, was running alongside you and yeah. proceeded to sprint by you at the finish line <laughs> at the end. But I just like, I just, it was like, it was almost like, um, I mean, it's so hard to put into words. It was like, it was moving. Yeah. Talk to me about that. I mean, last year, crossing the finish line, Splash for a Cure, the engagement and the turnout was epic. Yes. I mean, the race was amazing. Yeah. The, 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 the event and the award ceremony and the yeah. pool party afterwards was just off the chain. I mean, yeah. throw all that to you. <laughs> well, thank you. It's been our flagship event yeah. for years now. Um, it started off because um, our son Ishan used to love the water park, and it's around his birthday. ACAC um, is the host um, at the water park. They are one of our big sponsors, and they have partnered with us for this particular event, and we're so thankful to them for it. But it is a community awareness event where we wanted to tell the community, well, this is the fight in, of cancer, and there's families that are fighting, and we want to incorporate all of you guys and your families into coming out and having a great time for a very, very good cause. Yeah. Um, and it's also where we raise most of our funds. Most of our funds come from this particular event, so we love community support in that. It was a pool party because our, Ishan loved pool and he, he enjoyed it. So we thought, what better uh, place than bring the families and they can have a great time as a family at the pool. Yep. We added a race to it about three, three years, years ago, ago, I want to mm -hmm. say, uh, because we felt like there were, Charlottesville was such a running community <laughs> and they would, oh, how cool is that, that you can run in the morning and come in, dunk in the pool right after and enjoy that splash. Yep. So it works for Splash for a Cure, the brand that we have for this race. Um, but also the festival, because there's a ton of children there. It's a walk, jog, run. Kids so are. the kids are involved, the parents are involved. Mm. For me, my son uh, grew up with the story with stories of Ishan, yeah. right? He knew that he had a brother who went to heaven. He fought a great fight. And then he saw parents that are involved. And so it wasn't something that was forced. He just saw what we're doing in the community. Yeah. And when he started to pick up the pieces, he wanted to get involved in it. So he decided that he wanted to run the 5K in honor of his son. He asked Did it the his year daddy, before, yeah, with yeah. me, yeah. And he said, I'll run for the children fighting cancer. And it's amazing because now he has a little journal and he writes in it about what Ishan Gala Foundation means to him. And he actually talks oh. to his brother. What does it mean to him? Um, Can I, he, let yes. me share a story. Yeah. yeah. Um, because Archer's eight years old. Right. And, his, and he's on point. His, he he's, yeah. a, he's an amazing young man. Yeah. And it's his compassion and understanding. I mean, we have so many conversations about Ishan. And it's like, oh, Ishan's in heaven. He's like, well, Dad, can we just go there and, and go see him? Like, well, why don't you slow down a little bit and enjoy this life for a second, <laughs> right. you know? Um, but, you know, his principle, just to give you an idea of just how much love he has for his brother, um, the principal from his school called me one day because another kid in um, Archer's class lost his mother um, to cancer. And so the kid was having a rough day, and the teacher was watching, and Archer just put his arm around him and said, listen, I, I promise you your mom is playing with my older brother in heaven right now. And just put a big smile on his face. Uh, and I got a letter from the principal. At first I thought Archer was in trouble. It was like, the principal's calling. What's the deal here? But it was just his compassion um, and his love and his, his just admiration of, of who his older brother was. And it's hard to believe that Ishan would be 13 this August 28th. Yeah. Um, you know, it's been that many years have passed. So, um, but it's, you know, Ishan's still a household name for us. We don't yeah. cover it up. Um, you know, we want our boys, our family growing up. I always tell people she's a mother of three, not a mother yeah. of two. I, oh, you have two kids. No, we are mother. She's a mother of three kids. Yeah. Um, and so we just love teaching our children, um, of who he was and showing videos and showing pictures. His legacy. His, His legacy. legacy. Absolutely. Yeah. 
I mean, that is truly, truly amazing. Yeah. Freddie Jackson's watching. Um, he says, you guys are awesome. Much love. Great purpose. Thank amazing you. humans. I've been following them since the mid-1990s. Oh, wow. Anja Andalek, who owns Fig Bistro in the corner, has got heart emojis in the stream. Uh, Michael Buchensky, the mortgage officer, has given you guys yeah. big-time props and says, you guys are absolutely amazing people. Um, Benjamin Myrtle says, just an amazing interview. Megan McKeel Armstrong, I can't wait for Splash for a Cure. Um, Guys, give it a like and a share here. Um, talk about the, I guess, the Ishan Gala Foundation. You've touched on this already. Sure. Um, some of the impacts anecdotally that you guys have had with the, uh, through the foundation. Sure. You know, initially, um, when we first launched the foundation, we were a research organization. Mm -hmm. um, so we were particularly supporting research, pilot studies. Uh, one of our desires early on was to find less toxic treatments for these children fighting cancer. And what exactly does that mean? Well, I mean, if you, in, in 2007, when our son first started fighting cancer, just to give you an idea, they were giving him breast cancer chemotherapy drugs five to 10 times the doses of what they would give a woman going through breast cancer. Mm. So to watch what it did to his little body and, um, you know, sometimes you wonder, was it the cancer that did it or was it the chemo that did it, you know, because of just the impact of these drugs. So for us, it's like there's got to be a, a less toxic way. And so we've supported pilot studies, um, you know, targeted therapy studies uh, where they've actually shown tremendous um, improvements and, um, you know, mortality, you know, the, the rates of these children surviving going up. And so that was our initial, you know, we've written grants for 25000 to the Van Andel Medical Institute, uh, Dr. Giselle Scholler, we wrote her, I think it was a $50,000 grant we did there. Yeah. Um, and then um, probably about five to seven years ago, our shift, knowing that the research dollars were already there, there's a lot of organizations uh, that support uh, research and, and finding these therapies, uh, our focus became more the children and the families. And our mission was really to be the hands and feet of trying to support them emotionally, spiritually, in their financial situations. So we developed a HEROES grant. Uh, so we've had, uh, I don't even know the numbers of children that have been on our HEROES grants where the parents would make requests through the social workers of the hospital and say, hey, we, we can't pay our mortgage this month. And we're like, hey, no big deal, we'll help you out. Hey, we can't pay a cell phone bill this month, or we can't, you know, my car just died, I have three kids, and uh, we will go find them another car if need be. You know, so for us, we, our shift became that. Um, and then we have our birthday program, uh, which obviously we want to support the kids, uh, you know, during their birthdays and the siblings, as yeah. Sajel had mentioned. Yeah. Um, and, you know, so, so that's kind of been our impact. Uh, I will tell you, we've probably, through grants mm -hmm. and, uh, through our, our heroes programs, I would say probably over two hundred thousand dollars over the last five guys. seven years Amazing. has been given um, in grants, and so and of course there's a lot more work to do, Jerry. You yeah. know, there's a lot more that we're trying to accomplish, and yeah. one of my big visions. Did, uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, one of my big visions is that we have a Ishan Gala House. You know, housing's a problem in Charlottesville for these families for mm -hmm. long-term care. Mm -hmm. um, and one of my design, and the Ronald McDonald House obviously does a great job, but they also get full very quickly. Sure. But I would love to be able to have something downtown, uh, a home, you know, where children and their families can come stay when they're out of treatment, and we could provide food for them in the evenings, it's a great entertainment idea. for them. And, yeah. and honestly, that's what, when we were part of the Ronald McDonald House community in New York City, a lot of times it was those little things when, that. you know, we had Ishan, uh, he was able to come out of the hospital and that evening an organization would come put a party on for the kids. And you have no idea the amount of relief that gave us. Yeah. Uh, so from a big vision perspective, I feel that's something that we're excited about being able to do down the road. Yeah, there's a lot of, lot of stuff that we need to do because two years ago when we gave that uh, UVA um, yep. a grant of $50,000, part of it went into research here uh, with Dr. Lee's work and then part, and a big chunk of it went into uh, helping the families yep. and a lot of that went in housing and getting them settled because at UVA here, uh, there's families from outside of uh, Charlottesville that come for treatment. And so there's so much work to be done in all, all these areas and we're really looking to to grow that work, to do more of it yep. um, in every little aspect, to be truly present in the lives of our families, to be truly serving um, at, at a very basic level 
um, in their lives while they go through this treatment. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we, we are certainly looking for community support. Um, the Splash for a Cure event is uh, coming up on August 24th. Yeah. And if you want a look into our foundation, like Jerry said, come on out, you know, feel that spirit among yourselves, see and get caught in that spirit because I'm telling you, you're going to feel it. Uh, it's there, it's, a, it's just so prevalent. Um, it's a very high energy event, so people love that event. Um, and you're gonna see the heart of our foundation and the mm -hmm. people that work, the volunteers, and who comes out to support in the heart of the community at that event. Um, it's from seven to 12, Jerry, mm -hmm. um, and the race starts at eight o'clock. And I think you can register on splashforcure.com. Splash mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, it's it's a really good time. And there's a raffle, by the way. So nice. It's gonna be great. Yeah, Ace, some of the best raffles. ACAC donates a year's family membership. Wow. Yeah. Raffle, yeah. Fantastic. And there's yeah. little small vacation packages yeah. and different things of that and nature. And then we have so. a really cool project coming up at UVA that we just approved. And so I think there might be some of the fun stuff that will happen at this particular Splash for a Cure event with UVA as well. Tyler Aaron Brown, this couple has helped me more ways than they even know. Uh -huh. uh, Brittany Cass Stevens says, such amazing people. A um, lot of people watching, guys. Oh I am goodness. not going to be able to get to all these comments. Um, I am uh, mindful of their most precious commodity, mm -hmm. which is their time. They have filled it an hour, and it's gone by oh, what's wow. felt wow. like in 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> um, wow. How about throw it to you? What, how can, you know, people are saying on the feed, like Barbara Alice, Maura Colburn, she says, um, cure not treatment, let me know if and how I can help your organization in any way you possibly need. Talk to us of how people can help. We need funds. Sure. We need yes. volunteer time. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, obviously people can give with their time or their money. And obviously we need both, no question. And so obviously they can go to our website, they can make donation directly on our page. One thing, uh, you know, I always like to tell people is we, we try to operate as a, a very grassroots found. Matter of fact, I ran this organization without even an employee for the first three to five years because I wanted 90, 95, almost 100 percent of to what it. came to in to, to, the the, to the cause. Mm -hmm. And even now we have one director. We, we operate um, with minimal um, expenses. And so for those of you that donate or give to our foundation, we want you to know that uh, you, we know you're trusting us yeah. with your dollars. Uh, our job is to be good stewards of the yeah. money that is coming in and making sure it's going to the right purpose, right causes. Sage, I have to give her a big hand because she's definitely been, in the last two years, she has been the one kind of helping and monitoring and making sure that those dollars are going to the right places. So yeah. number one, obviously money. Number two um, is time. You know, obviously we could use volunteer yeah. support um, at different events that we do throughout the year. Um, even outreach with the families, um, you know, people that want to yeah. come and help and support those things. Um, but their volunteer time would be very, very appreciated as well. And um, I would like to say pass the word in the community about who we are and the support yes. that they can get. Bring uh, the names of a family and connect us to the families that can use our organization because we are there to work. We want to connect with you guys. We want to connect with your families and Absolutely. people that need help. And we want your help. We really do. We can use manpower and we can certainly use funding. But for Splash as well, we can certainly use more volunteers if your time is available, we'll take it gladly. Um, raffles, if you have anything to give, please, we'll take that as well. <laughs> because there's people um, that would come to this event. It will, of course, if you're a business or an individual, uh, give us a raffle. We'll put it out there. It gets your name out in the community as somebody that wants to give back. And it helps us as well to help our family. So we appreciate that so much. Absolutely. You guys have been amazing. Jerry, Seriously. you've been amazing. Jerry, thank you. I oh. appreciate it. I know our yes. partnership with you over the last couple years has been fantastic. I know I see you at the gym every now and then. You, I miss you, you in my classes. You guys, I couldn't keep up. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Jerry, that's why, that's I don't that's go why to you the picked classes. up racquetball. <laughs> you think I'm joking. I'm not joking. My body was breaking down trying to keep yeah. up with you because I'm a competitive dude. Uh, and you absolutely. are a rock star. No, I truly mean this. You guys are absolutely amazing. Um, I, IshanGala.org. Um, follow them on Facebook, um, splashforupcure.com. Yep. Yes. They can go there um, that way too. Get involved. Uh, just yeah. come by one of the events. Just get a feel for it. Yeah. And I think once you do that, you're going to see the energy and then you're going to get involved more. 
Uh, I'm truly grateful for you guys coming on the show. Appreciate it, Gary. Thank Seriously. you, Jerry. Seriously. I love what you're doing. Can I just say sure. that for a minute? Yes, thank um, you. I really appreciate it. I know you came out to Splash, yeah. and I know that you uh, helped us out with some of that, um, video some production, of the video so. production sure. and, 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 and doing all that stuff. But just the fact that you are, you love Charlottesville, and you're out here taking people, causes, um, you know, business, yeah. everything about Charlottesville and giving it back to the community in this big way really is huge. Thank you. There's nobody working in this space like you are. Thank you. And I, I wish you really the best yeah. um, because I know that our community is going to be better with what you're highlighting, what you're doing. So big, big thanks from Mike and Sajal Gala, but also yeah. from IGF. Thank yeah. you. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, Harris Tolwer gets some of that props. Judah Wickhauer, my wife, Lauren Linsky, um, teamwork to make the dream work, undoubtedly, here at this, uh, this family business. 11 years strong, it's no easy ride, um, and we're only as strong as the fellows in this room and uh, my better half that's uh, keeping our, you know, with my son right now and just running the business and doing what she's doing. Um, I'm truly grateful for you, too, and for connecting with you guys on this platform. We will archive this show in totality on ilovesevil.com. We will take the audio and turn it into a podcast on Apple wow. iTunes. That will happen today, so you can engage with the uh, show and the content um, at your leisure. We closed the program the same way, and I think um, it's certainly more uh, impactful now with the events that transpired over the weekend in uh, Ohio mm -hmm. and in Texas and in Chicago. Um, we closed the show by asking everybody to embody the golden rule. And I, you know, we just, we don't make it so much per se about religion. We make it more about treating other people how you want to be treated yourself. Yes. Um, I think sometimes it's easy to hate and it's difficult to love, but the country needs us to love. Um, and if you think someone's kind of on the cusp of having a hard time in their life in any capacity, yeah. now more than ever, love people and go out of your way to love someone that you think needs some, um, some brightness or some energy or some uh, galas in their life. Um, I really, Absolutely. really encourage you guys, please, the golden rule, treat other people how you want to be treated yourself. My name is Jerry Miller. It's the I Love Seville Show. We will see you tomorrow at 1230. Enjoy your afternoon. Awesome. Yeah, man. Excellent. Thank you. Appreciate it. What a great show. Yeah, Thank you're a great, you. Uh, you're, you're a good host. You, you kept it going, yes, you so. are. <laughs>